Well, hello there, it's Sandy, and I'm going to make a beautiful soft floral card today, doing some airbrushing and Copic coloring. The stamp set I'm going to be using today is from Pink Fresh, and it's called Just Because. It has beautiful sentiments that go with it, and the flowers are delicate and so gorgeous. And I'm going to airbrush my background right over top of the stamped image. It, it was stamped in Versamark and then heat embossed with white detail embossing powder. And don't worry that you're not going to really be able to see very much of it while I'm doing the airbrushing. I'm going to do a rainbow-ish background on this. And if you decide you want to do something perhaps with some some blending brushes and distress oxide inks or something i think you can do a similar kind of a look if you don't have airbrush to work on with this but i know a bunch of people just bought airbrushes because of all my crazy alcohol ink stuff so i figured i will show you some airbrush things that you can do that'll be kind of fun and it's always fun to watch magic happen anyway so i'm just picking a bunch of different random colors to make a rainbowish, I'm going from a greenish color to a an orangey to a pink to a purple, and then I'll do a blue on the other side. I'm not going with a strict rainbow, just something happy for my card. In general, with airbrush, you want to use darker colors than you want it to come out because it's going to go down so light, and it'll help you to be able to see more color. I find that if I try to use really light colors, then I have to get the airbrush really close to the paper, and then I end up with sploogies. I'm a little better off if I can hold it higher up and be able to use a darker color, and the spray goes out a little wider and then isn't as bloopy on me. And airbrush does not use as much color as if you just sat there with the marker nibs trying to make this a blended background. It uses less ink because it doesn't sink into the paper. So now I have my beautiful airbrush background done, and I'm going to use the colorless blender to open up some areas. And the colorless blender, I've got um, a little bit of scrap paper off to the side in case my marker seems to feel like it needs to be scribbled off a little bit. I'm trying to basically lift up some of the white lines. And what this colorless blender does is just take the color off of the surface of the embossing powder. Now, in the past, I have told people not to use markers on top of embossing powder. Many years ago, there was an embossing powder that no longer is made, which was the one that I used at the time, and it just flaked and did all kinds of weird things to your nibs. For the most part, I find that the embossing powders that at least I own do this just fine. You may want to test it on a scrap first to make sure that nothing funky happens. But as I go over some of these, you can see that when I go over a wider area, like a petal of a flower, not only does that white line appear again, but I get a lighter color in the flower itself. So you can get this really beautiful tone on tone look by just doing this step and not going on to do the coloring that I'm going to add to it later. So you can choose which way you want to go, but super soft, super elegant, and really easy to do because you're really just removing color from off of that embossing. And here you can see even more of the flowers just start to appear as I go over it with the colorless blender. Doing it really gently, I'm not trying to trace anything and, and be real specific about it. If there's areas that remain with the airbrush over top of them, that's just fine. Because I'm looking for something that's just going to have a really soft feel to it. And I was really surprised that this worked as well as it did. It was very, very nice. Well, next I decided to try to add a little bit of color. And this is where you'll want to add some lighter colors instead of going with anything heavy because you could scare yourself real quickly. Even this green was potentially a little darker than I should have necessarily used with it. So there's that. I can go back in with my colorless blender to soften out some of that, which I'll do later. But then I decided to add a little bit of color, maybe to the base of each one of the flower petals, to add just a little bit of dimension as the color moves into that area where I've already put that light color, the colorless blender. 
and that starts to create a little depth for my flowers. And you can decide how much you want to do or not do on top of all of this. Again, you might want to test it out. But here I'm going to go over some of these areas where I was like, oh, I might have done a little too much. Just go over again with the colorless blender, lift the white back up to kind of clean it off, and then blend in some of those areas where some of that darker color hit. And I was like, oh, look at that. I started getting more of a, a feeling of depth from my flowers because now I've got a little bit of color in the leaves, a little bit more in the flowers themselves. So then I got daring and I decided to add a little bit more color to it. So I grabbed a pink and started putting a little bit of a darker pink in some of the very darkest areas. And this is one of those places where you can take baby steps so that you don't scare yourself too much and add some color in, go back in with the colorless blender to soften it and to lift those white lines back out. Because some of what you're seeing is the white line disappearing. And when you go back in there with the colorless blender, it'll start to soften everything up. But again, as you go over any of this, make sure you just take a look at your nibs, that you're not like picking up any of the embossing powder or anything, nothing's flaking off in your nib, and just scribble it off and you should be fine. Remember, if anything does happen to your nibs, you can always do the bag trick on them, which I have a whole video on. I will link it at the end of this one in case your marker nibs need any assistance. And uh, yeah, so this came out really pretty. I love this look and I might have to try some other interesting things. I want to do a fine art piece that kind of has this feel to it, but I don't want to do it with stamps. I have no idea how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to try it at some point. So keep an eye out and see if I come up with how the heck to replicate this without a stamp. But I've just used a sentiment and then I put it on a black layer that's popped on a black card base just to set it off almost like an elegant frame. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. The links to the stamps and all the stuff are in the doobly-doo down below. And I will see you again very soon. Have a great day.